live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Neighbors say they saw it coming. A local woman, meanwhile, apparently didn't see that danger. An open manhole right in her path. And she fell into that manhole and had to be rescued. Katrina Weber shows us who the neighbors and the city of San Antonio both say is behind this ongoing problem. From the corner of Brunswick and Packard Streets on the southwest side, San Antonio firefighters go deep, six feet down, to rescue a woman. People in this neighborhood off South Sarzamora captured this video as crews pulled her to safety Thursday afternoon. The woman fell into a manhole, which was wide open at the time, while walking on the sidewalk. I didn't see her fall in there, but I heard a lot of noise. So I'm pretty sure it was her falling in there. I don't know how you can miss that, but still. Both women realized what happened as the fire crews rushed in to help. Then they grabbed their phones. What they say they already knew is manhole covers there have been disappearing. I think somebody's stealing the, the top. There's screen. been a lot of that actually a lot lately. Neighbors say there's been an ongoing problem with manhole covers disappearing in this area. You can see where now that one is welded in place, but it looks like this one may still be fair game. The woman who fell in was taken to a hospital. She suffered a leg injury, but the neighbors say they're worried others might get hurt, especially children. Everyone plays around here outside, especially the neighborhood here. It's mm -hmm. just too much and it's dangerous. I don't know why they keep on taking them off. The city of San Antonio's Public Works Department says although thefts like this are uncommon, it replaced and sealed off four manhole covers after the woman's fall. The department urges anyone who notices any missing covers to call 311. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Police tonight looking for two people in connection to the disappearance of a six-year-old boy. According to the Ingram Police Department, Cameron Parrish last seen Wednesday morning. He is four feet, eight inches tall, has brown hair and blue eyes. That's his picture there. Ingram police also say they're looking for these two people in connection to the boy's disappearance. 32 year old Talia Graham and 39 year old Joseph Graham. Police did not say what their relationship is to the child. Police say Talia Graham was last seen driving a silver 2014 Nissan Versa Texas license plate number TLS 5425. If you have any information about these two, you're asked to call the Ingram Police Department at 830-367-2636. It has been over two years since 12-year-old Danilo Coles died and his father was charged in that case. Yet today, Derek Coles' defense team said they still need more time to prepare for trial. In February of 2022, the boy was taken to University Hospital unresponsive and had severe whipping marks and internal bleeding. Today, Derek Cole's attorneys requested more time to appoint an expert for a second opinion on the child's cause of death. The judge questioned that delay, but ultimately granted it. He did warn the defense that they would be first up for trial in 30 days. After the hearing, Cole's attorney said a plea deal in this case is unlikely. It's not going to be a plea deal. Um, they're offering a long time in prison and he wants probation at worst, so we're too far away. That trial is expected to start in mid-October. Coles is facing up to life in prison if found guilty. A half million dollar home destroyed overnight and a firefighter sent to the hospital battling an overnight blaze on Whisper Path near Lock Hill, Selma. Our Garrett Berger talks to neighbors there about spotting that blaze on an otherwise sleepy night. Andrea Metter was in bed when she heard some funny sounds she thought was rain. But it was just the opposite. Flames were leaping up over her neighbor's roof on Whisper Path. And I could see them kind of coming up above the roof line on that side of the house, and I could see the smoke above the house. Frightened, Metter called 911, which sent her a link so she could show them video of the blaze. And I came up to the front of the house and showed them the link, and then they were here, you know, they were here within five minutes. The fire was also called in by another neighbor's son, who was returning home after getting some late night Whataburger when he smelt smoke and noticed a light at the home. And up in the corner, he could see a little bit of smoke coming out of the roof. And so he ran to the front door and he started banging on it and ringing the doorbell to make sure nobody was in there. Nobody answered. Fortunately, nobody was home. The house has been on the market for nearly three months, listed at over half a million dollars. Today, it's a charred wreck. No one was here. I want to see the bag. 
We saw a woman, whom neighbors said was the owner, arrive and look over the property, salvaging a few belongings. Met her stopped to pass on a kind word. She's trying to allow it to sink in. But the woman and her companion did not want to talk with us. It took firefighters more than an hour to beat the fire down. A firefighter was inadvertently hit by a ladder truck stream and complained of minor neck pain. He was taken to the hospital as a precaution, but is reportedly okay. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. News around Texas tonight, two police officers in Southeast Texas being called heroes after rescuing two children from a house fire. It happened in Vider, just east of Beaumont. The dramatic rescue all captured on body camera video. You can see officers Michael Stevenson and Ashton Moss rescue the children from the home as it was being engulfed in flames. The two kids taken to a nearby hospital with smoke inhalation. Thankfully, both of them are doing okay right now. Mm, some dramatic video there. All right, let's turn to Mia Montgomery and for Adam Kasky today, talking about that Friday night forecast. Mia. Yep, and it is going to be a toasty one. You know that if you've stepped outside over the past several hours, temperatures have managed to climb into the mid and upper 90s, but we have the humidity in place too, which means feels like temperatures have actually been able to climb into the low 100s. So it is going to be a very hot start to any Friday night football games. 94 degrees expected here in San Antonio around 7 p.m. Still feeling closer to 100. We'll gradually start to see those thermometers fall into and through the 80s after the sun goes down. But the heat does not stop here. It actually continues into the upcoming weekend. Hot and humid, mid and upper 90s still in the forecast. In terms of any rain chances, just a 10% chance for a very stray shower is in the forecast here and there. Even into next week, the vast majority of us, unfortunately, staying dry. These unseasonably warm temperatures do carry over into next week as well. Mid 90s continue. We're going to get you a full look at that forecast break down all the details coming up in just a few. All right, thanks, Mia. Let's take a look at traffic out there during the six o'clock commute. This is I-10 at Frio. You can see it's a bit of a hazy view, a lot of sunshine in this view, but you can see a lot of road cones as well, where that traffic is down to one lane on the upper levels of I-10. This is part of that ongoing construction. It's really been going on for a couple of months now at this point. Looking headed out of downtown, the heavy traffic per usual is what's heading toward downtown. Yeah, both the upper and lower levels there. Well, September is Baby Safety Month. Tonight, we're focusing on first-time parents. Our Patty Santos got a chance to talk to a first-time mom at North Central Baptist Hospital, where she welcomed not only one, but two babies. It's definitely scary to think about going home with them, but um, they've done a really good job at kind of telling us, like, what to look out for. The Bartholomews welcomed home their baby girls two months ago, but the twins are still being cared for at the NICU for a few more weeks. Mom says she feels pretty good about going home with her twins after getting a lot of training from the nurses. So I did come to one of the um, birthing classes here, but with the twins, it was really unpredictable on when they were going to come. Luckily, the Bartholomew twins will have some seasoned motherly love from their grandma. Amanda Pete has some advice for her daughter and first time parents. Enjoy the moment and don't worry about that mom gut feeling because it kicks in fast. It's terrifying sometimes, but it's amazing what you can just, you just know how to do as a mom and trust your instincts and um, it's just, it's amazing how quickly you learn what you need to learn. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Oh, Congratulations to them, right? So cute. The organization Zapatos and the San Antonio Police Department gave out more than 100 pairs of shoes to students today from Gilbert Elementary School. Jennifer Montez, who is a Gilbert Elementary social worker, said what means the most to her is watching the community come together to support students and their families. As a school, we can only do so much, but when we get the support of the community, we can do a whole much, a whole much more. And so we hope that like more community agencies will want to partner with schools and provide these types of events um, and do things just to support our students and their families. The annual SAPD and Zapatos Share the Shoes campaign will begin later on this fall. Last year, 2,000 shoes were collected for students who needed the most, and this year they're hoping to top that total. All donations and contributions directly benefit students right here in our area. Jim Boyle was a longtime news director here at KSAT 12. His newsroom leadership, legendary. Jim lost his life to brain cancer.
This year's Head for the Cure 5K right around the corner. It's in honor of Jim Boyle. That's how we started it. It'll be on September 28th at Providence Catholic School. You can register right now by scanning the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to the website to register. Proceeds from the Head for the Cure go to Brain Cancer Research. For more information, just visit ksatcommunity.com. Still ahead here on the News at 6, a major milestone for the Alamo City and the country, really. The nation's first Mexican-American Civil Rights Museum has been announced, and it's right here in San Antonio. We'll tell you the plans next. Why hasn't there already been one? That's a great question. Yeah. Taking a live look outside, live cam, feeling like summer this weekend. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery will give us a look at those toasty temperatures coming up. A memorial here is growing on the northwest side to honor a woman that was hit and killed after a double motor vehicle pedestrian accident. Coming up tonight on the night beat, her family is speaking out, sharing her story in the hopes that someone will come forward with information. A new national museum is coming to San Antonio, honoring Mexican-American civil rights. The Mexican-American Civil Rights Institute, also known as MACRI, announced that today, calling this a significant milestone. Sarah Costa gives us a look at what the plans are for the museum and spoke with local leaders about what this means for our community. A piece of American history that is often left out of the story. It's how the director of the Mexican-American Civil Rights Institute describes the new Mexican-American Civil Rights Museum coming to San Antonio. This tells the story of how Mexican-Americans have for generations contributed to creating a more perfect union, to expanding civil rights, to ensuring that we have equality for all. Community leaders join Macri Friday for the announcement. The location of the museum is still being decided between five different sites that run from the west side to downtown San Antonio. The first location is going to be somewhere behind the original Macri offices, which runs between Buena Vista and West Commerce. Other options include on West Commerce next to the Hereda Law Firm, west of I-10, just north of the UTSA downtown campus, directly across from that on the other side of I-10 by Market Square and Milan Park. And the final location they're calling Creekside, right in the heart of downtown, next to San Pedro Creek and Kenner's, between Texas Public Radio, and that building would be in this area of where this vacant building sits. The location will hopefully be decided in the next six months. As for its opening date, that depends on funding. Currently, Macri receives about $250,000 from the city and county every year, but the Institute says they will need 10 to 15 million for a capital campaign to build and open the museum. They are asking the community for donations with the big gift coming up next week to kick off that campaign. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says this museum is so much more than a destination that will attract tourists. It belongs in San Antonio. It is our story and the children and grandchildren who inherit the city will inherit those stories, but also inherit its mission. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. It's exciting. I can't wait to find out where it's going to be. And there's some great locations. Yeah. So hopefully sure. one of those works out. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. Meanwhile, okay, is this the hottest Friday night we've had for football so far? I mean, it's up there. It's definitely up there. I'd say maybe mid to late August and we had that 108 degree day and we were just kind of coming off of that peak. It's pretty close, but the humidity is what also is just making it a very, very hot start to any Friday night plans that you may have out and about. And here's the thing. This is kind of summer's last grasp because these hotter than average temperatures are actually going to carry over into the upcoming weekend and still into the start of next week as well. Let's talk about it. Here's a look at your weekend forecast. So far today, we've hit right around that 96 to 97 degree mark. We are going to be there again tomorrow and into Sunday. Notice your feels like temperatures there approaching if not climbing into the low triple digits for a few hours into the afternoons because of that humidity. The average high for this time of year is 91. So we are well above that today and that will still be the theme. Let's kind of talk about why we are expecting these above average temperatures to continue into next week. As we zoom this out and take a look at the big picture across the lower 48 high pressure system positioned over the Great Lakes right now. The remnants of what was Hurricane Francine 
Irene that made landfall just to the west of New Orleans on Wednesday as a Category 2 hurricane. That has been very slow to trek up the Mississippi River Valley over the past 48 hours. It is still dumping some decent rain across the deep south. That is eventually going to work its way farther off to the east over the next several days. But notice this bump in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's a high pressure system that's going to be scooting across the state of Texas even into early next week as well. So that is why these hotter than average daytime highs will continue mid to upper 90s expected tomorrow, Sunday, even into Monday. And then as we start to see a little bit more cloud cover work in by the middle portions of next week, those daytime highs come down to the mid 90s, but still uh, unseasonably warm for this time of year. So let's talk about your Saturday. First thing tomorrow morning because of the humidity and the moisture in place, I do anticipate more clouds working back in by sunrise. We're going to start off the day right around 75 degrees. That is also warmer than average and muggy. 89 expected, pushing 90 already for any lunchtime plans that you may have out and about at noon. Partly cloudy skies taking over into the second half of the day. There's that high temperature right around 97 by 4 to 5 o'clock. With that humidity, notice your feels like temperatures approaching 100 degrees expected. So for it being mid-September, this heat somewhat not what you would expect at times. So just be careful out there if you are planning on spending extended amounts of time out and about tomorrow afternoon. Most of us will be in the mid to upper 90s, even approaching 100 in a few locations, especially south of the Highway 90 corridor. What about any chances for rain? Pretty dry over the next seven days. Just a stray 10% chance for a shower here and there late Sunday into Monday. And then potentially by this time next week, the vast majority of our area does look to miss out on any decent rain chances. Unfortunately, we certainly could use it, but at least we did see some improvements in the latest drought monitor update that was released yesterday. This was last week's update, and I want you to pay attention to San Antonio and then also parts of the hill country. I'm going to fade on this week's drought monitor update. We did see improvements thanks to some recent rain back in late August and early September. Bear County has now been trimmed out for the most part of moderate drought, and we actually did see that red color, that pocket of extreme drought that has been erased across the hill country as well. So that is great to see and an interesting fact for you. The last time South Central Texas did not have any extreme or exceptional drought in place was 990 days ago, back in late December of 2021. So trending in the right direction, we just need to keep going. And unfortunately, over the next week, again, no notable major chances for rain, just dealing with more of that above average heat. All right. Thank you, Mia. All right. It is a Friday night. That means, of course, we have big game coverage. Yep. We also, Mary, have a road trip in store. Yes, already on to week three. I'm very excited for this week in particular. After the break, Nick is live in Poteet with an inside look at the Aggies, one of the teams on our BGC road trip. And the final injury report entering week three doesn't look great for the Cowboys starting tight end. Stay with us. Our big game coverage road trip is heading south tonight, and the first stop is out at Poteet, where the Aggies are looking for their first win of the season. They're set to face a tough opponent tonight in George West High School, but adversity is something the Aggies enjoy. And that's where we find our Nick Mantis. The home of the Aggies is the first stop on our week three VGC road trip. And Nick, you learned more about how special the community is to this team. Yeah, Mary, you hit it right on the head there. Community is huge for Poteet, and as you can see behind me, they're already enjoying and celebrating family night as players are walking out with their family members. And what was interesting earlier this week was that we were interviewing members of a team who have lost 12 straight games. So we wanted to know what's helped them fight for that next win. Here we go, Elijah, let's go. Good, there you go, fellas, there you go. Good, 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 good. The road hasn't been easy for the Poteet Aggies, who are coming off a winless season last year and have started this year with two straight losses. But this group prides itself in its ability to persevere. Nobody complains, nobody complains, everyone picks each other up. It's a good atmosphere. Uh, last year it was a, a little ups and downs and everyone put their head down, but this year's atmosphere is a lot better and 
we could go far with it. I tell these guys, football's a game of adversity. It's going to be hard. It's going to get hard. Uh, you got to find a way to push through it and fight through it because we're not only uh, working here on the field for now, but we're, we want to create great young men. Life is about adversity. We're mentally tough. We're way mentally, more mentally tough than we were last year just because we're older. We've got more experience. So if you're going to come over here, expect to fight. This week's game is a special one, as it's the Aggies family night. And the support of the community means so much to a team that's never felt alone through its struggles. It means a lot, not just to me, but to everyone else, all of them. We're all really excited that they're here to support us, especially because of last year and these last two games that they're still right there standing with us. The boys have the support of the community even though things haven't gone our way. Parents should be super proud because football's not easy. It's not an easy sport. It's going to test you physically and mentally. We're always excited to put on a show for our parents and hopefully bring back a W Friday. So the stage is set for the Aggies to go after that elusive win tonight. Of course, we're going to have the highlights for you and another edition of In the Nick of Time all coming up tonight on the Night Beat. But for now, Mary, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Nick. Here's a look at our week three BGC road trip route from Boutique. Nick and photojournalist Eddie Latigo will go to Somerset, who's hosting Jefferson. Then they'll stop at Southwest Legacy, who welcomes Eagle Pass win to town. And headlining tonight's 14 game BGC slate is our game of the week matchup between John Jay and South Sand at 730. For more on this one, head over to the BGC page at KSAT.com. We'll also have highlights and post game on the night beats. In NFL news, Cowboys tight end Jake Ferguson is doubtful for Sunday's game against the Saints after suffering a knee injury last weekend, which sets up Luke Schoonmaker and undrafted rookie Brevin Span Ford to fill in. Dak Prescott shared his confidence in Schoonmaker if he does, in fact, start. Yeah, a lot of confidence in him. I'm excited if he has to step up uh, for him being able to just uh, take, on, take on that responsibility, be a down in and down out tight end. Um, and you look at the guy's size, you look at his athletic ability, he can make plays. And sometimes guys like that just need uh, that opportunity and just get thrown into the fire a little bit more than they have. And so I'm excited for him, a lot of confidence in him. Um, if it's his day when we get out there, uh, I'll do my part in making sure that he has a good one. Cowboys Saints is at noon on Sunday. All right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Well, if you are looking for something to do this weekend, we are talking Puro Picks coming up next. Yeah, they're not just any picks. <laughs> All right, it is time for Puro Picks. As Steve said, they're not just any picks. They're not randomly they're done. They're not randomly done. No. They are chosen by influence extra influencer extraordinaire, who we have joined us every few Fridays, Stephanie Guerra. Thanks so much for being here. I'm glad to be back. It's I great know. to see you. It's been a while. I love the events that you pick out. Thank you. And tonight <laughs> is right up there at the top. We're talking about Michael Jackson versus Prince Dance Party at Stable Hall tonight. It starts at 8 o'clock. So it's I'm guessing it's the time. music of each of them? Well, since they're unfortunately no longer with us. <laughs> right. I know, but I'm like, or do they have impersonators? So I'm not, sure, uh, I'm not exactly sure how far they will go. Stable Hall has been putting on some really cool parties. Yeah. They have two different DJs that will be DJing, one all Michael Jackson music, one Prince music, and then they'll be battling against each other. Oh, so cool. it's going to be a really fun party no matter who is your favorite. <laughs> they're both at the rock star, superstar level, right? But you have plenty of time to get there. It doesn't start until 8 o'clock tonight and the dance party will go all night long and I love these two DJs they are the best you have to go out and hear them and get on the dance floor yeah I mean if you're looking for something to do it's hard to beat it <laughs> he had that ready to go <laughs> it was ready to go yeah. okay explain this next one we're not quite in uh, basketball season right so this is men's final four fan jam tip off yes yeah, so It'll be here yeah. March. Fan Jam is yeah. part is leading up to our men's final four that's coming back to San Antonio for the fifth time mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. San Antonio is an amazing host city for it. And uh, this year they actually have something new that we haven't had in past final four years. So it's a fan jam and it's a box truck and it's actually got this great setup outside of it. It's a sport court and it's a kickoff event for it tomorrow. So um, the San Antonio Local Organizing Committee who's hosting it who I'm also a part of, is uh, 
closing down a couple of blocks of Houston Street tomorrow in front of Legacy Park and City Tower. And we are going to put actual basketball hoops yeah. up and down Houston Street so people can play that. basketball on the street. The Fan Jam will be there. We have a surprise guest, the mayor, um, a lot of really cool community leaders to speak on the excitement of the Final Four and how it takes the whole city putting that together for us to celebrate it. And it drives all this money to our city, right? Economic yeah. economic impact is huge. It's the next, you know, biggest thing to the Super Bowl. Right. So it means a lot for our city, and it's a free time to play tomorrow. And not if too you're not early to get excited. If you're not yeah. sure with Legacy Park, it's where Pinkerton's Barbecue is, <laughs> yes. right next to the Frost Tower. I mean, it's all it's in the heart. All of the downtown. dad tips today, Steve. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just <laughs> By the way, parking is for now. <laughs> parking, you can park at City Tower and City Lots for five dollars on Saturdays, so nice. it's a wanna, really good deal. I want to see if the mayor's gonna shoot any hoops. I'm curious about. I'll that. bet. I'll bet on it. All right. Second Saturday, <laughs> by the way, this Saturday, second Saturday social ride, the Kickstand Essays 10th anniversary meet. 4 p.m., Roll 5 p.m., Legacy Park free bicycle ride. Yes. So a lot of stuff happening at Legacy Park then. So I was wondering if you have ever been on this bicycle ride before. The Kickstand is a great community organization that has different bicycle rides. This is their 10th anniversary of the downtown second Saturday ride. Okay. So it starts a little bit later, right after Hoops. So you can go, you know, in the early afternoon, go to Hoops on Houston Street, and then stick around for the bike ride. And it's super exciting. They're going to ride through downtown or like down into Southtown. A lot of fun. You get to meet new people. Um, they have, you know, food, drinks, they stop at local businesses along the way, so they support local businesses and then they end at one. But the kickstand, um, if you follow the kickstand on social media, they post rides going on every single day. So it's a really, really, really cool account to follow. I have never gone on this ride, but it, it, you're making me want to. You have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, up next, this one sounds like it is for indie music lovers. KRTU, our only local jazz station, fully dedicated to that, but they show off a lot of indie music as well. So yes. they are doing something for their 25th anniversary concerts. So KRTU, Trinity University's station, a uh, music station, also has KRTU Indie. So they have a show called Music for Listeners that's been on for 25 years. So they have a series of two concerts. Um, the first one is tomorrow and it's celebrating their 25th anniversary. And I think this one is so cool. It's a free concert in the Laurie Auditorium and the Laurie Auditorium is huge. So yes, lots of people can go. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's featuring Boxtrot. They are a band from Austin that took on the national stage. Uh, Buttercup, who we know and love, know. also we know Buttercup. Eric and Buttercup. Yeah. They've been a San Antonio staple for a long time and blushing, and it's at seven o'clock tomorrow. And it's indoors, you know, if you want to cool off yeah. and listen to some great indie music, celebrate with them, and then make sure you follow Music for Listeners if you don't tune in already or check them out online because they will have another concert later this fall. All right. Now we're getting to the DAC6. Yes. Mm. It's going to be a big weekend downtown for Fiesta. I love Patria. all this stuff happening. Yes. Yeah. So um, I wanted to make sure to talk about everybody that was doing something. So if you go to the city's website, they have a calendar of events, and it talks all about Fiestas Patrias. So we're celebrating Mexico's Independence Day. Um, you'll hear, like, El Grito. It's a big celebration mm -hmm. at midnight. So Market Square. Avenida Guadalupe, the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, and the Artists in River Theater and the San Antonio Charo Association all have events going on this weekend to celebrate. So at midnight, they're doing a big grito? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> so these events are happening all day, actually started yesterday through okay. this weekend. And then on the depends where you go, look up these places first. On midnight, the 15th, um, that's when they will actually celebrate with El Grito, because officially Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off on the 15th. Okay. Yes, he says is the 16th, right. right? So technically midnight on the Sunday night, but because it's a day that everybody has to go to school yeah. and work, some people will do it on Saturday night right. as well. I'm you glad to you out told there us a time. Give it a try. <laughs> I, I may be out there anyway. Yes. Okay. I expect to hear you. It's lots of fun. Somebody recorded if you see Very puro, Steve. You should do it. <laughs> okay, uh, Mexican Consulate also putting on something for this. This one's at the Pearl, though. Yeah, so in case you can't go out tomorrow on Saturday, because there's so many events tomorrow, 
On Sunday, you can join the Mexican, Mexican Consulate in Pearl to celebrate their event called Viva Dieciséis. It's not as late at night. It's from 5 to 9 p.m. They will have a grito competition, Ooh, so you all nice. could go out there and try that. Um, there is also going to be mariachi performances, folklorico, alebrijas. There's going to be food. It's going to be super lively. We all know the Pearl does it big, mm. big, huge event. So... It's a great weekend to ce celebrate Hispanic culture in San Antonio. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about a time that they had a grito competition at my house? No. <laughs> and my friends decided to have it at 2 o'clock at the base of my stairs that went upstairs. My wife was sleeping. 2 a.m.? It was, it was a.m. A.m. I was at, not there <laughs> in the particular area where they were doing this, but they decided it was a good time to do it. And, mm -hmm. and then you learned your lesson. And my wife disagreed <laughs> with yeah. that Shocking. decision. She vehemently Not Budo, disagreed. Steve. That's not Budo. <laughs> we want to be respectful. Midnight's the cutoff. Very demure. Yeah, very demure. Yeah. Mindful. <laughs> All those things. Stephanie, we want to be. thank you for being here. Very Pluto. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great weekend, everybody. You too. It's great to see you. <laughs> we'll be right back. The U.S. in the midst of both hurricane and wildfire seasons. Yeah, as Lee Waldman reports, right now there are probably a lot of homeowners crossing their fingers, hoping that Mother Nature will spare them physically and financially. Extreme weather is becoming all too common as are climate issues. It's putting homeowners in a tough spot. A new survey out this week found that a quarter of homeowners in the U.S. feel unprepared should the worst happen. As Hurricane Francine slams the Gulf Coast and wildfires rage in the West, 26% of homeowners surveyed by bank rates say they are not financially ready for a natural disaster. A lot of insurance companies are starting to exclude certain perils that we're used to having covered. Shannon Martin, a bank rate analyst who specializes in insurance, says homeowners in the South and West are most likely to feel unprepared to shoulder the financial burden of extreme weather. Those homeowners feel a little bit more unprepared because they know kind of what they're heading into. And while the majority of homeowners surveyed do have insurance, they do not necessarily know if they have adequate coverage. What type of repairs and updates do we need to make to this home to make it more insurable? Invest in upgrading your roof. If you live somewhere you know, where there's wildfire, it really can be as simple as making sure the area around your home is free of debris, free of um, trees and shrubbery that can catch fire easily. Martin says to pair that information with the realistic extreme weather threats facing your neighborhood today and in the future. I would suggest going online to a climate like to an online tool like riskfactor.com or climatecheck.com. Put in either your current address or the address you're thinking of purchasing, and it'll forecast what the next 30 years of extreme weather events will look like in that area. Another shocking statistic, 15% of respondents told Bankrate they would go into debt if they had to pay the deductible they would owe if their property ever did get hit by an extreme weather event. In New York, I'm Lee Waldman reporting. Look outside with live cam, heat, humidity. What are we looking at for the weekend? Mia? All of the above into the weekend and even into next week as well as these hotter than average temperatures continue. Speaking of which, that's exactly what we saw today. A little bit warmer than average this morning, but not too terribly bad. 72 was our official low, a high temperature of 96. That is above the average of 91, but thankfully four degrees below the record of 100 set back in 1912. But yes, upper 90 is still expected into this weekend. We're going to get you the latest on that. Plus a look at the tropics coming up. Okay, I like what Mia said earlier that this is summer's last grass. <laughs> We had a just took, done after yes. the summer. We had that taste to fall earlier this week. It was so nice. We had you, cooler than average low temperatures. We were in the low 60s yeah. and then the humidity returned. High pressure is moving back in for a little while longer. We have to deal with some hotter than average temperatures, but then on average, we should start to see those trend down. I am. I'm writing down okay. on Friday, September 13th. <laughs> Mia said <laughs> write it in, in that's what it, the calendar. I will say looking at long term <laughs> guidance, though, at least throughout the second half of the month, it is still looking like we'll see warmer than average temperatures. 
but I would think into October as we start to get some more noticeable fronts in here, it'll feel closer to like what we saw earlier this week. So we have that to look forward to. Something else that we monitor though this time of year, the tropics and Tuesday being September 10th was the climatological peak of hurricane season. Take a look at this graph. Hurricane season officially running from June 1st through November 30th. We're now over that peak in the mountain, but this year, of course, the peak of hurricane season coincided with what was Hurricane Francine moving through the western Gulf of Mexico earlier this week. Again, it made landfall in Louisiana on Wednesday, and since then it has been very slow to work up to the north. Kind of came into contact with a frontal boundary, and you can see this Friday evening it is still dumping scattered rain across parts of the deep south, most notably right now just to the south of Atlanta and some more scattered rain across portions of Alabama. Take a Look at these rainfall totals from Francine and that system's moisture just over the past three days near and southwest of Tallahassee. Radar is estimating over 12 inches of rain in a very short amount of time near New Orleans, just over eight inches. You get closer to Birmingham, about five inches of rain, same over in Memphis as well. So a good chunk of the deep south cashing in on some of that rain from Francine. Again, in some areas, it was too much of a good thing in a very short amount of time. There were some flash flooding instances, but things should start to improve, especially as we get in and out of the upcoming weekend. In other tropical news, as we take a look out in the Central Atlantic. This is Tropical Storm Gordon. As of the latest update, 4 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center, wind sustained at 40 miles per hour. It's moving to the west northwest at 10 miles per hour, so moving very slow across the Atlantic. This is of no concern for us here in South Central Texas, but still something that we'll continue to monitor over the next week or so. It also is worth mentioning there is a low pressure system expected to emerge off of the east coast over the next couple of days. The National Hurricane Center also giving that a 40% chance of tropical development. So just something that we'll continue to keep tabs on. If you were curious, the next name on the list for this season is Helene, followed by Isaac, Joyce, and then Kirk. In the meantime, back here in San Antonio, we are wrapping up this work week on a very toasty note. 95 degrees right now here in San Antonio. Take a look at New Braunfels, 97. It's 98 in Seguin. We have the humidity in place, so it still feels like 100 degrees whenever you do step outside right now. It feels like 102 in Floresville, 101 in Poteet. I'm sure Nick was feeling that earlier as he was previewing the football game. Speaking of football, if you're stepping out this evening, do know that it will still be plenty hot out there over the next couple of hours. Then after the sun goes down, we'll start to see those thermometers fall into and through the 80s. 75 degrees to kickstart your Saturday tomorrow. Mostly cloudy skies here in the Alamo City. 92 expected 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Forecast high right around 97 feeling closer to the century mark for a few hours into the afternoon. More of the same is expected into your Sunday. Pretty dry over the next seven days as well. Just a 10% chance for a stray shower here and there. All right. Thank you, Mia. The buzz coming up next. In the buzz today, a crash involving a train, a truck and an armored tank was caught on camera. This happened in Goose Creek, South Carolina. A witness said the semi truck hauling the armored military style tank got stuck on the tracks. Yeah, law enforcement says the driver did try to unhook the trailer, but ran away at the last second as the train came barreling through. Thankfully, it's a different angle there. Thankfully, no one hurt in this crash. Tank got <sighs> spun around there a little bit. All right, the world's best pizza for 2024 is in New York City. The mm -hmm. Italy based 50 top pizza awards named Una Pizza Napolitana hey, as the best <laughs> this year. The owner of the pizza parlor in Lower Manhattan said it's inspiring to be recognized like this 30 years into his career. Adding to their bragging rights, New Yorkers saw three other pizzerias make the 2024 list. But Naples, the holy land for pizza and foodies, bested New York with five entries. Italy still managed to dominate the overall list with 41 eateries compared to 15 here in the United States. Despite the name, the top 50 list includes 101 restaurants in total. Did they even try any in San Antonio? I'm guessing Probably no. Probably no. There's some good pizza places in San Antonio. What was the name of the restaurant again? 
Una pizza napolitana. There we and go. I went, hey, I added the A. <laughs> in case you wondered, though, we'll it didn't right end in an A. Okay, gearing up for a toasty weekend across South Central Texas. The calendar may read mid-September, but it is still feeling like August over the next couple of days. 97, the forecast high tomorrow, 96 on Sunday. So if you have any last-minute pool time that you're wanting to get in, not too bad for that. Those warmer-than-average temperatures continue into next week. Thanks, Mia, and thank you for watching. I want some pizza. Right? See you at 10. Pizza 10.